Hey guys, what's up? It's Andy Elliott. In this video, I'm going to show you how when a customer says the payment's too high, I'm going to show you how to close them on the payment that you want them to be at, and they're going to be happy with it. Watch this video from the beginning all the way to the end. It'll help you during your negotiating and closing, and if you learn it word for word, it'll change your life. Check it out. That's it. Did you see how I replayed it back, took it away, pushed them to the side, then came back in? Look, I'm going to tell you guys this. Paint freaking pictures. So. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, clap the room, I'm coming through. They want to see what I'm about. Yeah, I got skills, do it for the thrill. I'm on a paper route. Your goal is to not ask for more money. Don't ask. If you have to ask for more money, it means that you've exhausted lots of different areas. And by the way, sometimes you will have to ask. But the idea of it is, is that what my ask needs to be is not 500 more in payment. My ask needs to be for 100 more. I need to cover the other 400 through money justification. Presenting the warranty close. Presenting the warranty close. Guy comes in, trading a truck in, right? I'm just saying, guys buy trucks all over. Guys trading a 2016 F-150. Look, 2016 F-150. And let's say it's got 85,000 miles on, okay? Guy's paying 400 a month. He's buying a 2020. Well, or I'm sorry, a 2021 Ford F-150, okay? And let's say the payment's gonna be 650 a month. And the guy says, I'm not, and brand new one, and he says, I'm not paying a penny more, period. Like, I'm not going up a penny. If my payment's going up, I'm not gonna buy. You guys ever hear that? My payment's going up, I'm not gonna buy, yeah? Okay, I'm not going over this, I'm not going over that. Every day, okay? Guess what happens? When that happens, is gas better from here to here? No, it's not. I mean, it may be a tiny bit difference, but the idea of it is gas really isn't going up. The only way that you're gonna save this deal is by doing what? Warranty close, okay? I'm going to explain something to you. You have to be extremely good. Who, who, who's in finance? Is anybody in finance in here? Anybody at all? Okay, you. Okay. All right, watch this. You sell intangibles. Am I right? You guys are good at selling cars. Hey, look at my car. Look. Look at my car. Then you go inside. You're sitting here. Guy's like, dude, I told you. I'm not paying a penny more than 400. I'm not doing it. Guess what? How do you close them on 650? Well, it's real easy. You can say, like everybody else and their dog, hey, guys, it's a brand new truck. I mean, come on. Brand new truck. $250 more. That's a good deal. You know? It's like, come on, man. Why don't you close Close me. Why don't you make it my idea? Make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and make it my idea every single time. So how do you do it? Well, number one, you do it with this right here. You do it with your hand and your pen. You know, this is your sword right here, okay? And you do it with your piece of paper. Look, I'm going to explain this to you. I don't know what kind of structure you have in your life. I don't know what it looks like, but you better be able to write, okay? And for those of you in here who don't have nice handwriting, I'm sorry. You need to get better handwriting, okay? It's just the truth because you're a closer, okay? Dude, listen, a closer is a person who can close off a deal, okay? Your goal is when you close it off to close it with as much profit as possible. Why is this called a master closer seminar? Because look, there's two types of closers. Actually, there's three. One, a closer is a guy that can close the deal, but he doesn't close it for all the money. He's always negotiating that. Guy walks out, he says, hey man, I closed that deal. Close that deal. Man, you didn't close that deal for all the money, okay? I saw you. $5.99, you, you, you got it down to $500. Yeah, you closed it, but you gave up the dough, okay? $5.99, you can go in a master closer. And he'll close it at $5.99. He closes it and he closes it for all the money. A grand master closer, this is my favorite is the person that can go into any situation even when it's on fire. You know what that means? That means like guys blown out, right? Blown out. Guess what happens? You slide in. Hey guys, oh, what's going on? My name's Andy. Look, I just want to show you something for 10 seconds and if you want to leave, I'm okay with that. It doesn't matter. I want to show you something real quick and you get in and you close it down and they love you for it, okay? And you close it for all the dough. That guy can write his own check in this room. That guy can walk into any dealership and they'll say, hey, listen, I'll close every door, uh, every deal in your store. Every, every, they come in here, I'll close. They call on the phone, I'll close them. I don't care. I need a hundred grand but I'll close them all. I mean, I'll, I'll make you an extra 600 grand a, uh, a month. I'll close them all. And if you could do it, they would pay you that 100 grand because it would make the company so much money. Guys, understand this. Being able to close and talk about money is probably one of the most important things in the world. And by the way, I mean, it's all important in the beginning, right? I said a great closer starts right off the hand gate, you know, making sure that somebody wants to deal with you. But I'm telling you, when it comes to this, all you would have to do, guy says, hey, I can't afford 400. You know what I'm saying? Or, I can only afford 400. I can't afford a penny more. Hey, I totally understand. Let me show you how affordable your new vehicle is. You flip it over. When you did, you write old truck right here, old truck, 400, right? New truck. 650. Guys, just like that. It's always the same. It never changes. It's the same way every time. Flip and right. Flip and right. When you flip it, what will you say? Number one, we always want to state the facts. Look, Mr. Customer, on your old vehicle, it's got 80,000 miles. The fact is, it's 2016. You currently have no warranty. That's it. You write it down. It's very simple. Sir, the national average, what it costs to maintain a vehicle that's currently out of warranty is what? Well, that's going to give me 200. Dude, let me get this through you guys' 
head for a second. Three grand ain't crap. For a car, to fix a car. Dude, if anybody's ever had a car in the service station, what does it cost per hour to fix a vehicle? What does it cost? 100 to 150? Okay, cool. Look, should you know what it costs per hour in your service station? Okay, so everybody's 150 to 200, am I right? Okay, look, let me draw a little quick picture for you, okay? Sir, the average customer has their car in service for at least four to five hours when they bring it in. For just a small problem. It's $200 an hour. 200 an hour, five hours, that's $1,000. The average part costs 500 to 750. That means every time that you bring your car into service, you're gonna spend a minimum of 1,500 to 715 bucks. Okay. I can tell you this, that with your new vehicle, you will never have to worry about what those costs are because you will have none of those costs. How does that make you sleep at night? Great, right? If a motor went out in your truck and it cost 10 grand, I'm gonna ask you a question. Even if you put a 10 grand motor in it, would it make your truck worth more money? <laughs> no, your truck's only worth what it's worth as long as it has a running motor. So you'd spend 10 grand on something that wouldn't become worth more money and you'd waste 10 grand. Let me ask you another question. Whether you had the 10 grand or whether you had to go borrow the 10 grand, right? Was it still your money? Yeah. If you went and borrowed it, let's say you had a $250 payment on it. Well, now you're paying 250 bucks a month just for a motor that's in the truck that doesn't make it worth any more money. Wouldn't you like to put your money into something that's actually gonna hold its collateral and that would protect you? Look, sir, I'm gonna tell you this. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, watch, I'm just talking, I'm not even writing right now. At the end of the day, let's say you drove out of here, right? And you didn't own any truck, none. You're truck free, you don't have one. But then you came back into to me and you met me and you said, Andy, hey, I kind of like this 2016 with 80,000 miles and I like 2021 brand new one, zero miles. Andy, would you show me the deal on both of them? I'd be absolutely, I'd love to. So I'd show you the deal on your old truck, which is what? I'm gonna be straight with you. It's got a $400 payment to the bank, but you're gonna pay $300 a month or $250 a month maintenancing it because it doesn't have a warranty. They're really expensive to fix. And by the way, if something like a mower goes out, it'll be way higher than that. So bottom line is, is total ownership cost between payment and maintenance is gonna be 650 a month owned. On your new truck, you're gonna have a newer truck, <laughs> redesigned body South, brand new driving, all the new tech upgraded cool shit that you like, zero miles on the odometer, but guess what? You have a $650 payment, but the maintenance payment's gonna be nothing. At the end of the day, it's gonna cost $650 a long time. If you were here and we were talking to your bank account, which we are, and your bank account said, well, what do both trucks cost? They're both $650. Which one would you want to own? The old truck, the 2016 with 85,000 miles, or the new one with zero miles? You'd want to own the new one, right? Congratulations, that's when I'll get cleaned up. That's it. Did you see how I replayed it back, took it away, pushed them to the side, then came back in? Look, I'm gonna tell you guys this. Paint freaking pictures.